Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brent Brookhouse. I am here. Well, I am on the uh, the Skype with all ego Ethan Page. Uh, Ethan, you're still out in the UK. How are things going? Great. How is your life, though? Because you just had a kid, so. Yeah, man. Uh, it's good. It, it's real good. We uh, on Monday, uh, my second daughter was born, and man, life's good. We just got back uh, because it was a a C-section. We uh, well, she had to be in the hospital until early today, um, and I just stayed there with her because you know I'm such a good. Of course, guy. yeah. So uh, you could, you're allowed to put yourself over. Yeah, man. We uh, so that's a good thing. Yeah, so we got back today. Um, we were in the hospital last week, Thursday and Friday, because she was having some blood pressure issues, which led to them deciding that we just needed to get the kid out on monday so in the hospital thursday friday came home for the weekend uh and then went right back on monday had the kid spent a few days in the hospital and yeah we're home a little tired but uh life's real good man awesome so official name of the baby you guys went with uh it is finley allison brookhouse awesome yeah that's awesome the picture you posted was adorable yeah man she's cute it's good um yeah we uh we got there and like i have never sat in on a surgery before or anything wait what you you watched i mean i okay i did not watch i am not a, a guy who can watch i sat by her head and there's like a screen that blocks you from seeing anything so you know, I, I could sit there and keep her calm and stuff like uh, normal birth for my first daughter. And I caught her like I have no problem with that. But seeing somebody sliced open, no, nah, I'm good. Um, yeah. But like so they they bring in the scrubs and they're like, all right, we take her in. Then you put on these scrubs and come in to, you know, or we'll come and get you and take you into the operating room. And I was sitting there panicking because I legit didn't know, do I put these scrubs on over my clothes, or do I, like, strip down and put these scrubs on? What would you do? Like, naked? Well, not naked, but, like, you know, over underwear, like regular clothes. I would just put it over my clothes. Well, yeah, so that's what I ended up going with, but one of the nurses was like, yeah, most most dads just, you know take off their clothes and you know wear them as their clothes and then change afterward and what have their butts out well no that you're wearing like scrub bottoms and scrub tops like oh i thought i'm sorry yeah i would have just went in my underwear too but i thought you were saying like uh uh i was thinking of the gowns right no no like scrub no, pants yeah, scrub scrubs top. yeah i would have just socks and undies bro so I almost did that, but instead I, I went with keeping the basketball shorts on, which I was just wearing to be comfortable. And we go to what, the... What, just, just in case they wanted to toss the baby to you for a slam dunk? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just wanted, like, oh you know, God. comfortable. Well, regardless, I after the baby's out, I go to the nursery with the baby, and these scrubs are huge. I mean, just massive, like... They gave me, I think they were a 3X. Now, I'm a reasonably big guy, but since uh, last November, I think it was, I've lost like 60 pounds. I'm not a 3X kind of guy. <coughs> Jesus, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm a 1X guy. I'm not a 3X guy. So I'm standing there in the nursery like my daughter's holding my finger and they're like, you know, cleaning her up and giving her you know vaccines and stuff and my scrub bottoms just fell right off so had i not kept the shorts on we might have had like some sort of actual issue so, <laughs> so i made the best call of my life by by going against the uh the initial instinct of just uh just underwear socks and scrubs good job yeah man so that's so funny yeah we're we're home it's uh you know she's a good sleeper but 
it doesn't matter because every little noise they make when they're when they're new is like wakes you up anyway so yeah because you're worried yeah i'm tired but um you know i'm good can't believe you're doing this the podcast (laughs) oh man she's three days old i'm pretty sure oh yeah you did the podcast a couple days in i did i thought so look at us yeah it's commitment we're dedicated i hope our listeners care (laughs) (laughs) yeah with our very confusing uh podcast structure of sometimes we talk wrestling sometimes we talk about the avengers for an hour and 15 minutes oh my god <laughs> well, so i was today i was tweeting that awesome uh avengers infinity war like graphic to promote last week's episode because i i loved it and i really want people to go back and listen to it after they watch the movie but like as i was typing it on instagram like how to describe our podcast i was like <laughs> Yeah, go check out our podcast that we sometimes weekly put out, but not really. We record on the same day, but never do. (laughs) Like, do we have a schedule? I mean, we have a skeleton of one. You'll get a podcast once a week, unless we just don't want to do it. (laughs) To be fair, this is, I think, episode 26. It's episode 27, if I can manage to save the first of the two episodes we recorded oh man week. which i hope you do because i loved that episode yeah that was really good uh but i think we've only missed like two or three weeks and one of those you were in japan one was uh my you know christy being in the hospital um so I, I, as irregular as it seems we're, we're pretty regular about getting out at least a weekly episode it's just All right. what we're gonna talk about i don't know yeah this is just uh hopefully people just like us and then whatever we put out they enjoy <laughs> yeah that's kind uh, that's of what the we're goal. going for here yeah well yeah you put out that art and i yeah i hope people see it go to twitter uh both me at brent brookhouse and at official ego uh ethan has uh tweeted out the art um a bunch of people are like i'd buy that on a shirt and it is one of the few things we have that could never actually be sold yeah (laughs) just the uh the logic behind it being made um but yeah (laughs) but it is beautiful it's really good uh okay so go back to you losing 60 pounds how is this not a, a thing we've been talking about i think because uh quitting smoking took center stage so oh that's right and you still haven't smoked i have not and that's Good been since you. a couple days into January, so Good for you. Yeah, man, trying to trying to not die young. That, that's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> if I can well, do that then I think that's everyone's goal. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't really think people are like, you know what? I'm twenty. This has been a good run. <laughs> no, but I think there's a lot of people that are like I don't know, maybe it's just an excuse to not adjust your behavior it's just like ah, i'm gonna live my life how i want to live my life and whatever happens happens and really oh, the, really uh, it's the, you only and, have one life right and i think i mean i definitely i don't know why i said i think i definitely used that for a while in my life and really it was just like i'm too lazy to make even simple adjustments to how i live but you know kids and everything yeah dude you don't gotta tell me so the reason i brought it up was trying to make myself accountable so that i can actually talk about this on the podcast so uh last year around like october i started this ketogenic diet and it was awesome and it did wonders for me i lost a bunch of weight until about december but i set a cheat meal date we might have even talked about this on the podcast uh for my Christmas party. So <laughs> once that once that came, it was like a waterfall of sugar into my life and I just did not stop because it was with a keto diet it takes a couple days, almost a week for it to kick in. So every time I would cheat, I'd be like, "Well, it's New Year's next week, so I can't start keto now cuz in 5 days I'm going to have to stop." So I'll just do it after that. And then I was like, oh, but then I'm going to this concert. So, like, I don't want to have to just drink water. 
or like, oh, we're going to the movies because this is coming out. And then that kept going on. And then I was like, you know what? Fine. When I go to Japan, I will go on, back on keto. So now we're like February. Like we'll go, I'll go back on keto. It'll all be great. So I might have dieted like the first three days in Japan and then just derailed my life as soon as I started getting sad. So <laughs> I would just stop at 7-Eleven, get an ice cream bar every single day. And it just like wrecked me and I never like recovered. Uh, so then it's been 11 days now back on the keto diet. Uh, 11? Maybe 12? Oh, whatever. And I'm in England. Pretty much have to buy food every single day, uh, like out of restaurants or meat shops or whatever. And I've been doing it. So I stopped making excuses and I'm just trying to get back. And now I have like no cravings. I'm never hungry. Uh, it's definitely my favorite diet because I get to eat cheese. But yeah, I'm going to try to lose 60 pounds too. <laughs> yeah okay so I'll, I'll get even more personal here here's like the most fucked up thing in my life right now so I've lost god I, it's like the last time I weighed myself it was 63 pounds since November which uh -huh. is awesome I've stopped smoking since January also awesome and then I started feeling like absolute shit a couple weeks ago um so I had to go to a doctor, see like what was going on. Yeah, definitely diabetic when I'm healthier than I've been in uh, like years. Well, yeah, because so like this is what I like to call this the Scott Steiner syndrome. Because if Scott Steiner stopped doing steroids, he'd probably die. But if he keeps doing them, he'll probably live forever. So if you had so all that sugar and cigarettes for all those years. And then you just stop them both. Your body's going to shut down. Now you're diabetic. <laughs> and it's like, basically, my problem was for more than a decade, I worked from home. And like the weirdest hours, you know, for most of that time, I was covering MMA. So that meant like, oh, weird fights from Japan this weekend, starting at like three in the morning. So... I'm just not going to sleep, uh, but I need a bunch of caffeine to get through this. Um, and then the next night there's, you know, fights from Vegas that start at, uh, 6 PM and they're going to run until about 1 AM. And then there's a po uh, post fight press conference. I have to cover that. So yeah, I should probably just drink a shitload of soda cause that caffeine will help me get through that. And, you know, just eating a garbage diet, even though I'm at home and could easily be cooking food, which I like to do. So yeah, it was just years of garbage treatment of my body, and uh, now I'm paying for it as I'm trying to uh, not be fueled by sugar, fat, and cigarettes. So, how does diabetes work? Like, I'm, I'm for sure 100% serious. Don't don't know. I mean, basically, it's that. Do you, do you need sugar or you don't need sugar? Um. I have high blood sugar. Like, I don't really crash. Um, so even, like, I can go days without eating any sugar or, I mean, carbs. And that's okay. It, it, yeah, that would be great. The problem is that without medication, I still have high blood sugar, even though I'm not eating any sugar. Because my liver stores up and then just releases a bunch of sugar into my system. Oh, so you're like having carbs without having carbs. Like you're literally eating pizza without, like you, you eat air and it turns into pizza. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's uh, awful. <laughs> yeah, it's really terrible. Oh it's, my God, that is a curse, dude. <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, now that I know that that's a thing, now I'm on meds for that and it's more motivation to, you know, get back in and stay in the gym and, you know fix other areas of my life but it's just it's the most annoying situation where it's like man i'm really seeing results by just living a healthier lifestyle this is awesome oh, i kind of feel like garbage oh yeah don't worry you have a terrible disease oh my god but, well dude you should look into 
keto, and then we could text each other recipes. <laughs> uh, that's actually what I've been told I should be doing. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Basically, I love it. You can yeah. have bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've basically been told, you know, no carbs, or not no carbs, there's a very strict amount of carbs I'm supposed to get every day. Yeah, it's like 35, which is like vegetables. Right, and uh, yeah, obviously like no sugar, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, man, that's that's new. And having a, a, a newborn in your home makes it all the more easy to, uh, you know, not just grab shitty food when you just have a couple minutes to eat. What? No, it makes it harder. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that, I was, was, like, that was the joke. <laughs> that was the stalest delivery of a joke ever. I was like, "Oh, he's so serious." <laughs> I'm real tired, man. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, "What is he talking about?" You could just order a pizza. <laughs> oh yeah, good luck, man. That's so tough. Yeah, that but... is so tough. Well, like I'm super blessed. Because during the week, well, when I'm not in another country leaving my wife alone with our kid, uh, I'm home. So, like, I can cook while she takes care of the kid or vice versa. I can take care of the kid and she can cook. So it's the eating at the at the same time that's the hard part. Right. Oh, yeah. So you still... Anyways. Yeah, you're still in the UK. Yeah, let's talk about wrestling. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's... 20... 20 minutes of us just talking about our bellies. <laughs> just babies and fat and my pants fell off and I have diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, so uh, so how's the trip been? It, honestly, it's been one of my favorite uh, trips to the UK and I was kind of dreading it in a sense of my schedule was a little light and it was too long of a time. But... <laughs> You know, in the way of my life, it all just lined up perfectly. Uh, so yesterday, I went out to Nottingham, England, and taught a class at the House of Pain Wrestling Academy, where they have two rings in the facility. Um, they have 100 students, and I taught a class for the advanced class, and I was there for like three and a half hours. It was like... When I, whenever I do seminars, I always go in, like, super nervous because, in my mind, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So I don't want to go there and just, like, embarrass myself or, like, not be worth the money. But once I start teaching, like, it's the most gratifying thing to me because, like, I have, like, my opinions on things and thoughts and stuff, but I would never give anyone bad advice or teach them something that I didn't think wouldn't help them. And I, like really enjoy running a wrestling class it's something that i've like learned to love over time so i got to do that yesterday which was awesome with like 20 kids uh, i tweeted a picture of, of of that class and then i ended up staying the night in nottingham uh coming back to the town i'm staying in got picked up today at five o'clock and drove out an hour and then taught a completely different school for the same thing two three hours and uh, it was amazing. And, like, both classes were completely different. The one today was a uh, more inexperienced class, and the one yesterday had a lot more experience. So, like, to change the lesson plan on the fly, to adjust it for people's experience, and, like, I don't know, I just really enjoyed it. And I've learned to love teaching. I wish I had more time and uh, a different like schedule so I could open a school in my hometown, but I don't have that much time to dedicate to, if I couldn't do it a hundred percent, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. And it's not like it's uh, such a money maker that you could just uh, open it and teach classes when you're around and have somebody else be head trainer or something. Well, like... shit, dude. Fuck it. It is in England. <laughs> this dude has a hundred students. Well, I was about to say like the, that's a big difference between the UK and here where, um, a wrestling school called the house of pain here is in some dude's garage and <laughs> yeah like the the ring is some old beat up uh like mats that he got when a gym when a uh, school gym closed down and... well man so like these, these guys today they, 
they've been training for like a year and they've only had a ring for the last couple months. And they tell me this after. I was like, what? I would have taught you guys how to run the ropes, how to bump, like the most simple stuff ever. <laughs> and I'm doing these like intricate like sequences and stuff to like gauge their experience. And none of them were like, oh, dude, we've been training on like gym mats for the last year. And I was like, oh, god damn it. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's probably, so, uh, it's the whole, like, they don't want to say that and have you just shake your head and walk out. Oh, no, I would never do that. I, I know would. you would never do that, but I think that would be my worry in their place is like, uh, as soon as I tell him that we, uh, we haven't had a ring, he's just going to be like, oh, this is a waste of my time. Well, like my, the first thing I'll say is like, Hey, have you guys working shows? And they're like, yep. And I'm like, all right. I automatically assume that anything that I say you will be able to at least try. And then if you don't do good, I'll correct it. And, like, they did well for, like, dude, one guy didn't tell me. He, he's, he's been to three classes. Okay. I was like, bro, I'm like, bro, you need to tell me that. Like, <laughs> I was just like, all right, if no one's worked the show yet, let me know. They were all dead silent. I was like, okay, let's do this. And then this guy halfway through, he's like, so I, I probably should have told you. This is only my third class. I was like, yeah, you probably should have told me that when I was asking you to like leapfrog dudes while they're running at you. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, if for no other reason than if you want to get your money's worth, you probably want the person teaching the seminar to be able to adjust things to where you're at. Yeah, exactly. Oh, weird. It was, dude, it was a good experience, though. It was great. I loved it both days. It was fantastic. And, like, I can't say enough good things about the one yesterday. The school, if you're in England looking for a good school, has the pain's awesome. Uh, the trainer's name is Styx. He's awesome. Good dude. Jacked out of his mind. Looks like a wrestler. And he's very nice. And he loves wrestling. So, yeah, it was great. I miss the Attitude Era days where... Uh everybody opened a gym and it was like dudes who have never wrestled who also didn't bother to hire an actual trainer <laughs> like wrestling was booming so just open a gym and say hey come here and you get to be stone cold well apparently that's how it is in the uk <laughs> uh and then the one today uh they were like when are you back in england and i was like i'm coming back in june and they're like let's do this again and that's when i was like all right, you guys, I like you guys. Like, they want to learn. And they understand, like, right now they might not be able to have, like, a good head trainer. It's like a company that's just starting up, like, restarting. And they were like, no, no, this is good. We need to do this as much as possible. And that's all I want is people to just want to improve and want to get better. So I, like, I don't care how you start. My start, I told them right away, my start in wrestling was awful. I trained for a couple weeks thought i was great quit and then pretty much learned on the road so there's no one path to succeeding in wrestling so i don't mind and i'm excited to come back and see their progress and i'm just happy they have a ring now <laughs> <laughs> yeah man my uh my brief uh you know, eight. Yeah, you're CM Punk Battle Royal, bro. Yeah, my 18, 19 year old uh, getting trained by a guy I knew who worked quite a bit back then before shows where I was setting up the ring and then he cut off his girlfriend's toe by accident. That, Jesus that, Christ. That was the good right. days. I remember you telling me that. Yeah, man, that show where <laughs> he cut off his girlfriend's toe by accident by dropping the giant axe. Then. Um, I was supposed to just be refing because I had uh, maybe 30 minutes of experience in uh, actually being trained. But then uh, because he had to leave to tend to his girlfriend's severed toe, I had to work a match, which that went about as shit as you'd expect. Then, <laughs> then they decided on the fly, this is outside at a bar, on the fly decided, you know what would be a good idea after this wrestling show ends? We'll just do a tough man, uh, you know, the old boxing thing where it's just dudes that are around getting the ring and box. 
Oh my god. And they knew that I was a boxing fan, so then they gave me a ref shirt and they were like, you're going to ref all these tough man fights, which led to just random brawls between, you know, people's friends. And then uh, my payoff at the end of the show was he took me in a room and had an old stripper offer to give me a dance. (laughs) Hey, hey, listen up here. I don't got no $20, so dance for my man over here. Give him a little something-something so I can pay him. Also the guy who gave uh, Jimmy Jacobs a start. Oh, that's so so (laughs) accurate. Wait, is this Truth Martini? No, uh, I his start in the area was uh, just the guy that he worked in this area was a guy named Jeff Hill. Oh, okay. Who ran like seventy four different promotions? Where like, oh, Real American Wrestling is going to be here next month. Yeah, that was Jeff. Oh, uh, oh, that's awesome. Midwest, I love people like that. Midwest Michigan Championship Wrestling is going to be here next it. month. Oh, it's Jeff Hill again. <laughs> the african fight club will be here right it was just like dude that's so i love that well speaking of shady promoters uh the strong style wrestling or whatever was the company name they, they were supposed to be a show this weekend with like pentagon uh a bunch of people anyways canceled uh you canceled his entire schedule and didn't contact any of the wrestlers. All he did was post on Facebook, I'm done with wrestling. I'm, I'll refund the people when I get the chance. So I'm going to try and find this guy's name. I think I took a screenshot. It's Mike something. I should have looked this up first. I just want to make sure that no one ever works for him. Mike Smith. Oh, come from on. Strong... <laughs> That's a tough-ass name to be like. Avoid Mike Smith. Mike Smith from Strong Style Wrestling. Anyway, so I sent him a Facebook message, and I was like, Hi, we have an issue. I held three dates for you, and I turned down other work. If you're canceling all your events, I'd love to get part of my pay for that event in June. With the emoji... Of the eyes rolling in the back of your head. <laughs> ah, so unprofessional. I hate it. Yeah, that's... That's brutal. I assume you didn't get a response. Yeah, no. He didn't even read it. Yeah. That, Fucking John bad. Smith. I, I mean, mean Mike Smith. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Generic name just I, becomes I, another I generic name. <laughs> But that, I mean, that's the thing. If you're going to cancel your show, at the very least, like, have the balls to reach out to everybody and be like, hey, we're not doing this. Instead of just, I'm going to post it on Facebook and hope you see it. I think I canceled the show with Alpha One. I just can't remember when. This was like in the early early adolescence of it. Um, the, the, my venue double booked me for a wedding. Well, people used to mess with me all the time because I was young. Uh, and I think the wedding ended up obviously giving them more money. So, yeah, I had to cancel. And I just messaged everyone like, yo, guys, sorry, this, we're not done. But this guy's done, so. Right, there's no oh. making it up. Uh, you know, it's not like I'm going to make it right. You know, don't worry about it. It's just I'm done with wrestling. Ugh. That sucks. Yep. So, how much longer are you in the UK? I am here until Monday. What's still on your schedule before you head back? Uh, I've got Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, Southside Wrestling in Stevenage. And then Sunday, I've got a show for IPW with czw as well oh yeah yeah the uh, the joint show i forgot about that yeah and uh what what are you working there do you know or, i'm wrestling a guy named chris ridgeway okay I'm excited for sunday but uh tomorrow i'm wrestling carlito all right nice have you wrestled carlito before i have 
Okay. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> there was just a lot just hanging after I have. Yeah, I'm cool with dead air on that one. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, but yeah, I'm excited. Like, like I was saying, like the tour ended up starting slow, but picked up real good, and I was very, very happy with how it went. I mean, I am excited to get home. <laughs> so, so excited to get home. Yeah, that's uh, that's understandable. You've spent a lot of this year uh, overseas. Yeah. All right, let, let's hit some questions here. My, I am going to apologize up front and say my brain has just not been all the way there today. No, it's all good. Um, I don't even know how to answer this question. Uh, Wade Buswell on Twitter said, who would you cast in a wrestling version of Infinity Wars? I don't know if Ooh. that means cast the characters as wrestlers or cast wrestlers as the characters or I don't know what do you take that to mean yeah so like he's saying like who would you pick as Thor from the indies so my first one right away would be uh, Jimmy Havoc as Loki okay um. Oh I feel, man, I feel like it's cheap, but uh, I feel like there's so few options that you um. You have to go like. Cage as Hulk. Yeah, but that's not like. Well, Hulk is CGI, so we'd be casting for Bruce Banner. Right, but I'm just saying if you. Uh, if you were doing a direct no. uh, Ferrigno S casting, Fuck you, Brian Cage. <laughs> um, I, I would throw a wig on Cage and make him Thor. Okay. Uh, but no, or maybe Drax actually. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, okay, let's do this as a team. So, all right, so Drax is Brian Cage. Uh, now. Now you got me thinking about Bruce Banner, which is kind of like a, not nerdy, but pretty much just an average dude. So who's like kind of average in wrestling? Not not their wrestling, but just looks like a... Yeah, I don't know if that's like a Drew Gulak. Yeah, yeah. That would be a Drew Gulak. Like, and he would be able to pull it off, too. Like, he could pull off that, like, science talk. Like right, I mean, it's not that far off. Yeah, I was going to say, not yeah, far yeah. off from the PowerPoint thing. Okay, so Drew Gulak is the Hulk slash Bruce Banner. All right, this is good. Oh, man, this is really good. Okay, so now who would be Iron Man? Who's got that douchey goatee? Oh man, I feel like if MJF was older, he'd be a great Iron Man, but he's too young. Yeah, he, he he's not there. Um, oh man. Uh, so I'm gonna cast myself as Star Lord. All right. Because fuck everybody else and. I'm not going to cast Gamora because I don't want no rumors coming out saying that I cast myself as Star-Lord so I could, <laughs> you know. Right. So I'll let you pick that one. Um, but, okay, so Jimmy Havoc is low-key. Are you writing these down? Because I'm going to forget these. All right, hang on up. I'm pulling up a notepad here. There's a guy named Hammerstone that wrestles in California, and he looks exactly like Thor. Well, he looks exactly like Triple H. 
work. <laughs> so, wait, are we allowed to use WWE guys, or did he say only indie I mean, people? I, he did not say only indie. He said, "Who would you cast in a wrestling version of Infinity Wars?" Because uh, that's that's why I went Gulak. Oh yeah, true. Gulak is WWE. Look at me being stupid. Um. Hmm. Oh man, because then Fandango could be Thor. I mean, he's not that jacked, but he's not small. All right. Um. And let's see here in my list. Now I have to go. You as Star Lord. Good. God. Yep. That's official. Good luck arguing with me. Plus, I got a quick wit. I would be great. <laughs> hmm. Man, I feel like Heidi Lovelace would be a really good Gamora, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she would. She's badass. Alright. I'm good with that one. Stark is a hard one. Well, that's the thing. It's like he's got to have. He's got to be the leader. He's got to be good at talking. He, he's got to be older than everybody else. And I, like, give me that goatee too, you know? Yeah, I mean, the problem is looks wise, it doesn't work. But personality wise, like Eric Bischoff, Eric Bischoff would be a great Tony Stark <laughs> if he still had black hair. Right, like personality wise, there's a degree to which I could see like a Cody, but looks wise, oh, okay, not at all. Okay, okay. You know what? I'll, I'll give you Cody for Tony because he's got the like the want to be a leader thing, but he's also got that like could be a heel. Tony Stark's got that edge to him, right? Wait, he, and he loves and he loves his wife. So there's Pepper. What, what about Cap? Oh man, I don't know. I kind of feel like it has to be Kenny Omega now. <laughs> <laughs> He's Canadian. <laughs> yeah, they don't need to. It's acting, okay. Oh man, okay, so Captain America, who is John Cena? What the fuck? Are we stupid? Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, see, I'm trying to get too clever, and then John Cena's out there just being all obvious. <laughs> Super Captain America guy. <laughs> huh. Alright, who else is there? There's lots. Yeah, I'll feel like uh i don't want... uh i want i want grado to voice groot <laughs> let's put that one down yeah why don't you uh, pick a black panther <laughs> that just seems like such a trap uh i'm gonna go with it's it, uh, see this is the thing they need to be able to have that dope haircut he has and facial hair. I'm going to go with... You know Stokely sitting there just going, it's me. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, it is not, but you know... Stokely can it. do the voice for Rocket. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> I want I want a hood Rocket. Uh... Because him and Grado would be great. Uh, I'm going to go Cedric Alexander for Black Panther. And also, why is it weird? We're, all the white people we're casting as white people. Oh, I know. Um, I love that also, I'm, you, I love that I'm you tracking just, this like it actually is of like high importance and a note that we're going well, to need in the future. Well, 
once we say all the names, people can make a poster, which would be awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so hold on. What about Thor? Thor is a big one. We're looking for long hair. Well, we can do Kenny Omega for Thor. Okay, yeah, because you would you'd set Fandango for Thor, I think. Uh... No, I'm going to take Fandango out. I'm looking for retweets now when this when this poster gets made and he gets tagged in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there's there's still people left there. Uh, Falcon. You know what? Falcon, I'm gonna go with Desmond Xavier. Because I think Des worked in the military. In real life. Okay. Alright. What are we at? Alright, we've got a Loki, a Drax, a Thor, Banner, Star Lord, Gamora, Stark, Cap, Groot, Rocket, Black Panther, Falcon. <clears throat> Oh, you know, uh, Leva Bates as Mantis. Okay. And she'd just do her own makeup, so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could, Actually, Leva could do all the characters. Alright, let's... See. Yeah, I, how I many feel characters like we need a Thanos at, at the very least. Um, maybe Brian Cage can do that because he has the gauntlet in Lucha Underground too. Okay. Are, are you opposed? No, I, I can I can see that. Okay, so we got a Thanos, but do we have? Who are we missing? Winter Soldier. Oh, yep. Oh man, I, I went to Sammy Callahan, but I, you know what? I'm gonna go with old Austin Theory when he used to have long hair. Yeah, that actually that works because he's got that like chiseled jaw, and I feel like him and John Cena would be good buddies. And probably will be one day, let's be honest. <laughs> vision. Oh, oh, vision, vision, vision. Mm. What would you say he is, like British too? Yeah, I mean, yeah. But he's like very like meticulous with words, right? Yeah. I'm like leaning towards Zack Sabre Jr., but also not. Oh, man. This one's tough. I mean, there's, we can... There's in-suit vision, and then there's out-of-suit vision. We can what? What were you going to say? Oh, uh, I was going to say we can jump past Vision to someone else and circle back. Let's do it. Let's circle back. Uh, Black Widow. Oh, and Spider-Man. What are we yep. doing? Yep, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, Scarlet Witch. Oh, another fucking goatee. <laughs> and, and Doctor Strange, too, like, that's a that's a tough character. Yeah, because it's not like, physically imposing. But dude, people have to have characters like that in wrestling. Like that kind of like. And I'm not saying fucking Jarek one twenty just because he does magic. Yeah, he doesn't look like him. Yeah. Also, no thanks. Oh. 
come on, we got this. We're doing so good. ACH is going to be so mad that I didn't cast him as Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Everyone, everyone thought he was Cedric Alexander anyway. <laughs> <laughs> In the Cruiserweight Classic. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Also, uh, congrats on that uh, WWE showing. Oh, thanks, life. man. I had a great time at 205 Live. <laughs> that was like my most popular tweet in months. And the sad thing is, half of the likes were probably people being happy for me. Oh, yeah, there were there were some legit like congratulations in there. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we got to finish this list. I'm looking at at least uh, three... Four, five, what are you six, on? Cagematch.net? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. There are nine spots that I've thought of that are not filled yet. Yeah. Black Widow, Hawkeye, Vision, Scarlet Witch, Spider Man, Ant Man, Doctor Strange, uh, War Machine, and Nick Fury should probably also. Oh, Nick Fury, yeah. This is by far the longest we have ever spent on a question on the show, and it's casting wrestlers as Avengers. Damn. Dude, this is tough. Alright, there's oh. gotta be a there's gotta be a Spider Man choice out there. But it's just a really young kid. Right? Right. Young, good kid. A lot of ability. But not built like Austin Theory. Yeah, or Will Ospreay. Right. (laughs) Who's even young anymore? Yeah, I guess Young and Flippy, I guess, might be the uh, the closest we've got here. But also not obnoxious. Well, not obnoxious in spe- in certain ways, but kind of obnoxious in others. Dude, this is really tough. Yeah, I think uh, we may... We could... No, no, no. Could, like, Trey Miguel or Zachary Wentz be Spider-Man? Sure, why not? They're young. It's our movie. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's our hopeful Photoshop. (laughs) We're doing the longest bit we've ever done on the show in hopes of getting a good Photoshop. (laughs) If we don't, we have no fans. (laughs) We just close up shop, podcast over. I'll open up an egg account and then just Photoshop it myself. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so which one? Which who are we going for here? Uh, Trey Miguel. All right. Oh, Myron Reed too. Ooh, that's an option. Yeah, Myron Reed. And I'm gonna go Dave Chris on um, Doctor Strange. No, no, Tommy N. Okay, yeah. That was good. Tommy N for Doctor Strange. Alright, Hawkeye. Well, he wasn't in it, so we're good. We can avoid that one. This movie, yeah. but, you know, definitely and an, Ant-Man. an adventure. All right. Who is Who the is lead girl? girls? We could, we could do... Yep. Yep. And we need Black Widow. Black Widow. Who dies Who dies a lot? Chelsea Green. She can be uh, Scar- uh, Black Widow. Because she went from, like, 
red hair to brown hair to uh, blonde hair. Okay. I'm pretty sure Chelsea Green has gone from blonde hair to black hair to pink hair. Yeah, that works. I think we're good. What about Vision? Oh, man, Vision. You know what? Let's just go with Zach David Jr. All right, Zach's good. I'm going to throw out, uh, let's go Priscilla Kelly as Scarlet Witch. You with me? Ooh. No, but the gimmick. She would kill that. Good yeah. call. Yeah, I'm liking that. Good uh, call. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. We need a Nick Fury still. Who are we going to use here, Nick Fury? You know what? I take that back. I want Stokely to be Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so, he, so Stokely Hathaway on stilts will be <laughs> Nick brutal. Fury. Okay. So And Shane Strickland will be War Machine. Okay, Strickland is War Machine. We need a rocket voice now because he took Stokely away from me. It's rocket voice. We'll use MJF for that. Alright, that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we've ever taken this much time on a single question. Actually, I know that we haven't, and I think I've said that already, but seriously. Oh my god. What a question. It turned out to be brilliant. Just just great questioning here. Good yeah. job, Wade. That was fun. Did we do good? I think okay, we let's did go great. from every, everyone from the top. So this is for whoever's going to Photoshop this for us. <laughs> All right, so we do have a problem. We don't have a Drax yep. anymore. Uh, we lost Drax because uh, because Cage. We ended. Oh up yeah, because sh- Brian Cage ended up being Thanos. But get this, Drax we Batista. Need... Yes, dude. Yeah, I was. It... Right, it's perfect. Perfect. He's a wrestler. <laughs> perfect. It's cheating, but it's too good to not do. <laughs> so so we're good. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Jimmy Havoc as Loki, uh, Batista as Drax, Kenny Omega as Thor, Drew Gulak as Bruce Banner, uh, Ethan Page as Star Wars, oh, that's the best one. Heidi Lovelace as Gamora, Cody as Stark, John Cena as Captain America, Grado voicing Groot, uh, MJF <laughs> voicing Rocket, uh, Cedric Alexander as Black Panther, Desmond Xavier as Falcon. Leva Bates as Mantis, Brian Cage as Thanos, Austin Theory as Winter Soldier, Chelsea Green as Black Widow, Zack Sabre Jr. as Vision, Priscilla Kelly as Scarlet Witch, Myron Reed as Spider-Man, Tommy End as Doctor Strange, Stokely Hathaway on stilts as Nick Fury, <laughs> and Shane Strickland as War Machine. Yo, we nailed it. Yeah, that would sell 200 tickets. <laughs> Easy. It's airing after All In. Yeah, Cody has rented a theater after All In to air the Wrestling Infinity War. It's called Infinity War Games. (laughs) Oh, that's got to be the name of the movie on the poster, too, whoever's photoshopping this. If no one photoshops this, this sucks. This has genuinely been the best use of our time, and I can't think of a better spot to stop than after this. Uh, so, Ethan, go ahead and uh, pl- plug your shit, man. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Ethan Page, uh, at Official Ego on Twitter. I'm really trying to push my Instagram, so please go over there and follow it, at Official underscore Ego. And, of course, Powerbomb.tv, use promo code Alpha1, A-L-P-H-A, the number one. 20 days for free. There's 21 events on there. More coming next month. Do your thing. Sign up. Boom. And I am Brent Brookhouse. You can follow me on Twitter at Brent Brookhouse. Uh, follow my work at CagesideSeats.com and BloodyElbow.com. Uh, Cageside Seats are the good people who make this podcast possible. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this without their help. And uh, make sure that you go ahead, subscribe, rate, review uh, the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to it. Also, go comment at Cage Side Seats. Let them know how much you appreciate them helping us keep this podcast alive. 
Uh, outside of that, I, I think we're good. I'm going to get back to the family. And, uh, Ethan, you, safe travels getting back from the U.K., man. Thanks, dude. And I can't wait to see that Photoshop. It's going to be great.